Good morning. Um, these short film presentations by myself and Kevin Gray form part of the adjourned 2020 AGM, originally scheduled for 30th of April, but now taking place remotely for obvious COVID-related reasons on the 29th of September. Your votes at the AGM resolutions, which were made back in March and April, will be taken into account and the results will be made available via our website. Normally, I start by introducing our board and they stand up before you. That, of course, is not possible in this remote and digital format. So um, on this slide, you will see the list of the board members. They are the same board members as um, appeared at the AGM in 2019. So we've had continuity and no departures. And full details of them are set out in the members review, which was sent out to you in March. So what is the role of the society's non-executive directors. What do we do? Our role is not to manage the business, that is for the executive directors. We are there to offer constructive challenge to executive plans and to provide an oversight role. We are there to protect your savings and the mortgage assets. And in terms of corporate governance, we, the non-exec directors, have sole control and chair the risk, the audit, the remuneration and the nominations committees. The executive directors attend and they make their contributions, but they are there on those committees by invitation only. And what is our ultimate responsibility and role? That is to ensure that the society always acts in the best interests of you, the members. So in terms of strategy, um, we have a model which works well for its members. So why change it? So what hasn't changed? Well, we're staying mutual and independent, along with the other 42 building societies. We are not beholden to shareholders, as are the large banks. Our focus, and indeed our reputation, is on our niche mortgages. Yes, we offer residential, standard residential mortgages, but we are known for products such as Buy for Uni, um, Holiday Lets, Buy to Let, Rent a Room. We encourage saving to improve financial security. We provide support for first-time buyers. In 2019, 35% of our new mortgages were to first-time buyers, and our aim is to increase that still further. And overall, we remain prudent. We prioritize safe lending over rapid growth. We will not chase high volume, low return business, as that is not in the best interest of you, the members, and is not in the best interest of protecting our capital base. But where are we putting um, added focus? We need to develop our online, social media, and marketing capabilities. And we need to do this to attract a younger demographic of savers and borrowers, and we're committing extra human and financial resources in this area. We're also building our mortgage distribution via broker networks and mortgage clubs. We're aiming to improve for you the customer journey. This means less paperwork, making it easier to open the savings account and to apply online for a mortgage. We will continue to develop new mortgage products. We hope to launch in 2021 the Family Assisted Mortgage, which is a variation of the development of the existing product, the Parent Assisted Mortgage, and of course we've extended recently into Scotland. And we will continue to provide support for financial education for sixth formers in local state schools. We do this via a program called Wise Up, where Bibbs pays for a consultant who goes into these state schools and um, instructs pupils on the benefits of financial sound husbandry. So 2019 was yet another good year for the society. The mortgage book is at a record level. At the 31st of December, 2019, Mortgage assets stood at 248 million. And since then, during the course of 2020, that has mounted to over a quarter of a billion. The savings book also at the end of December 2019 stood at a record level of around 290 million. We maintain strong profitability, profit before tax for the year ending um, 31st December 2019 was 2.7 million. That is slightly down on the result for 2018, but is still one of the very best in our peer group sector. And as for our capital, 
we hold capital reserves which are roughly two and a half times the amount which we are required to hold by our regulator. We are one of the best capitalised building societies in the UK. But we are now nine months into um, a very challenging 2020. So I think it's appropriate to look briefly at 2020 so far, as well as looking back at 2019. With the onset of the virus, our primary concern was maintaining the safety of our staff and customers. As a government-designated key service, the society's branches were kept open throughout the lockdown, originally from 10 to 2. Subsequently, then, we extended those hours from, to 9 to 3, and currently, they are now operating from 9 to 5. The non-cashiering staff, those not working in the branches, supported by new technology, were very quickly and efficiently moved to home working. Well over 85 to 90 percent of the staff worked from home. The transition was extremely smooth, with a vast majority of staff operating very effectively almost from day one, as we had plans in place to take account of scenarios such as COVID. And in all of this, our savings and our mortgage services were maintained pretty much without any material changes, and they have indeed thrived. Liquidity via our savings has held up extremely well, and the growth in our mortgage book, Net of Redemptions, has seen the best performance over the last two to three years, quite bizarrely. And some of the 2020 COVID success stories we delivered cash directly to the homes of some of our most vulnerable customers during lockdown. They were unable to access the branches, so we delivered their cash to them. There were two Bank of England base rate changes. The rate is now 0.1%, as you're probably aware. The mortgage team worked incredibly hard to successfully process these, and we launched new savings products under the same lockdown conditions. Um, we continue to advance mortgages to take new loan applications throughout the lockdown period. Um, even though we had a reduced range of mortgage products, we have had an excellent result in terms of our net mortgage growth. And quite importantly, we did not cut any staff salaries, we did not make use of the governance furlough scheme, and we did not make any member of staff redundant. And what support did we offer to our members um, to deal with the pandemic and its consequences? Well, it was very important to allow members to access cash or to transfer funds to their banks. So at the start of lockdown, the society took the decision very quickly to drop all notice requirements and penalties applying to savings accounts. We have literally supported hundreds of borrowing members by offering payment deferrals or other forbearance measures in accordance with government guidance. We tried our very best in this ultra low interest rate environment to support hard press savers. We paid out 121,000 more in interest in 2019 than we did in 2018. And I think it's important to note that our average savings rate is now more than four times the current Bank of England base rate of 0.1%. And some of our savings products will offer you 10 times that rate. I know myself as a pensioner and a saver that these historically low savings rates are difficult to grasp. But nevertheless, that is the environment we are in. So all in all, I think BIBS has risen to the challenge of the pandemic very well and will produce a very commendable set of results for 2020. And I think that is thanks to three groups. First of all, my board for their continued wisdom, guidance and support. Secondly, to you, the members, for your continued loyalty and support especially those savers amongst you, because you have helped to generate and support our levels of liquidity. We respect that loyalty. And thirdly, but last and not least, I want to thank the big BIB staff, who in these very trying and challenging circumstances have worked quite magnificently to keep the business pretty much as near as normal. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kevin Gray. I'm the Chief Executive of Bath Building Society. I've been your Chief Executive now for just over two and a half years. What I'm going to do today is, is to talk about the financial performance of the society over 2019. We're going to look at some of the challenges that have arisen during the COVID issues in 2020. 
and we're going to cover some of the good work that Bath Business Society does in the local Bath community. Now, 2019 seems like quite a long time ago. Um, it was a challenging year for the society, but the good news is that we managed to grow the mortgage book. Our actual gross lending last year was £43 million, which was, in fact, higher than it was in 2018. However, our net lending, and that's the, the bit that's left over between us advancing new loans and people redeeming their mortgages, um, although it was positive, uh, just between £2 and £3 million, that was actually lower than it was over 2018. And that was due to competition in the market, which was exceptionally fierce. The good news is that the quality of our lending remains very, very strong and very safe. At the end of 2019, we actually only had 15 loans, which were more than two months in arrears. We had absolutely no cases actually in, uh, in repossession. And we only had two of our cases that required provisions to be made in the annual accounts against them. And that reflects the society's strategy of actually doing very safe lending, prioritising that uh, before growth. And our objective is actually to keep our arrears at or below the industry average. Moving on to shares and deposits, the savings side of our business. Well, that actually grew by 1.7% last year, which was equivalent to about £4 million. And although that, that was a, a good tale, I think the big story of 2019 was the rationalisation of our account range. We realised that we had literally dozens of account types and it was, it's basically cheaper to maintain a smaller range of accounts. So we had a, a wholesale rationalisation of, of accounts. Now that did mean that some savers did actually lose out a little bit on interest. However, the vast majority of our membership in fact, 75% of our savers actually saw a rise in the interest rates on their accounts as a result of that change. The society is now actually focusing on its core products. That's its instant access accounts, its ISAs, its 60-day notice accounts, and its fixed rate bonds. The society will, however, maintain its specialisation in some business accounts and in pension accounts, where we actually have a very, very strong capability of actually dealing with those types of customers. Moving on to talk about the 2019 profit performance of the society. Uh, when you look at the charts which accompany uh, this uh, speech, you will realise the fact that there is a sort of gradual decrease in the profit performance of the society over the last five years. Although I will remind everyone that in 2017 the profit figures were very flattered by the sale of our subsidiary business, which actually flattered the accounts by over £1 million. However, the increased competition that we're seeing, the increased investment that society is making in marketing and in IT, is reducing our profitability. However, we remain, when you actually compare our profit performance against asset size, we are and remain the most profitable building society in the United Kingdom, bar none. So our relative performance is still absolutely excellent. Over the next few years, we will still expect our profit performance to, to drop, but we do intend to maintain that relative performance against our sector peers. When you look at the society's capital strength, and capital is basically all the profits that the society has built up over the 115 years that we have been in business, they rose to £38.4 million. And these reserves really have two purposes. In the bad times, and we're in bad times now, I'm afraid, um, they actually cushion the society against potential losses. In the good times, they allow the society to grow its mortgage book much faster. And I think the very, very good news is that Bath Building Society is the best capitalised building society in the United Kingdom. Uh, now, bar one example, and that's one society that is undergoing a controlled wind-down. So the, the finances are exceptionally strong. Over many years, Bath Building Society has supported the local community in and around Bath. We've actually sponsored for 44 years the firework safety competition, which is run in Bath primary schools. Uh, sadly, the actual fireworks display itself, which accompanies that competition, was postponed last year due to high winds. And we know because of the COVID outbreak in 2020 that there will be no competition this year or indeed fireworks display. But we would look to support that in future. 
We've now been running the Bath Small Charities Award Scheme for 13 years, and that actually gives small grants to local charities that are really at the cutting edge, uh, at the coal face of, of hard charity work in and around Bath. Our Charity of the Year for 2019, and again for 2020, is an organisation called Voices, which supports individuals who are, who've actually undergone domestic abuse, a very worthwhile cause. As the Chairman mentioned, we have also increased our support for financial education in local state schools. And we're currently now undergoing a pilot at St Gregory's School in Bath to actually provide financial education seminars, both online and face-to-face -face, if that's possible, once per week for all weeks of the academic year. Now, if that pilot works, we look to roll that out to all the other state schools in the city of Bath. The UK's action to try and counter the coronavirus has often been referred to as a war against a silent enemy. So what news from the front? What's our experience been of dealing with COVID? Well, there's been some sort of interesting kind of features which have occurred in 2020, which we did not anticipate. First of all, we've seen, not surprisingly, a very large drop in branch footfall as people have been, let's face it, scared to go out. And to counter that, we've seen a very large number of our saving customers enrolling to use Bath Online, our online saving system. Whether or not these are temporary moves, whether or not people will go back to using the branch a bit more, we do not know at this stage, but we shall wait and see. The branches are now back to full opening, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and all of our agency offices have now reopened as normal. And social distancing measures are now in place in all those locations. We do, however, continue to work with the vast majority of our staff working from home. And we do actually see that working from home will be a permanent feature of how the society will operate when we get to the what we might call the new business as usual. As the chairman mentioned, mortgage lending in 2020 has actually been exceptionally strong. As at the 31st of August, we've actually grown the mortgage book by over £10 million, which is three times which, what we grew the, the book by in the whole of 2019. So, quite frankly, an excellent performance. And our shares and deposits are also growing, and so is the membership of the society. So all very good news. But storm clouds are gathering. We do actually have around about 60 of our customers, our borrowing customers, on temporary payment deferral terms. Uh, these are the so-called mortgage holidays, which you might have heard about in the media. Uh, the good news is that that number has actually reduced from around 400, and those people who've actually seen their holidays mature with us have gone back to paying their mortgage. And we'd like to think that uh, that will occur for the remaining 60 customers who we're helping out. However, the government's furlough scheme ends in October. We do not know yet whether or not the, the, uh, the government will support uh, employees out there in the wider marketplace. I think inevitably there's going to be a large increase in unemployment and that will inevitably impact on Bath Building Society's borrowers. So it's likely that we are going to see an increase in arrears and repossessions, sadly. And with that, of course, we'll mean that in the 2020 financial accounts, it's probably pretty likely that we're going to have to increase provisions against loan losses. So in summary, 2020 so far, we have actually successfully kept the Bath Building Society show on the road. And not only that, but we have thrived and we are flourishing. And despite these current economic activities, the mortgage book and the savings book are growing strongly. Our future operations will be different, however. There will be more home working. There will be less need for the society to have office space. And we will have to invest more in digital technology. One thing that will not change, however, is the fact that the society will always put its customers, you, our membership, at the heart of everything that we do. Now, we've had two members put forward questions to myself to answer um, in advance of the annual general meeting, and they both relate to, to savings. Uh, the first question is from a customer who has basically said, uh, you've recently introduced regular saver accounts for home start and for 16 to 25 year olds. Are there any plans to introduce a similar account, monthly regular savings account, 
for all customers who are either current or new? Well, the answer to that is simply yes, we do have that intention. We have actually approved a product, another regular saver product for the, the wider membership. Uh, we haven't launched it yet, but we're hoping to do so in the following months. And the second question which, which was put to us was, does the society have any plans to introduce a stocks and shares ISA? The answer to that one is no. Unfortunately, with the stocks and shares ISA, that requires permissions from the, the regulators that we do not hold. It involves having to give advice on investments, and we don't have permission to do that. Anyone who does actually seek a stocks and shares ISA should really go and see an independent financial advisor and speak to them about it. So we will not be doing one of those. And finally, I'd like to thank my colleagues here at Bath Building Society, who have put in a tremendous performance over 2020 in what has been a very testing and trying year. They have risen to the challenge and they have made Bath Building Society a better place to work. They've also put in some really extraordinary behaviours which really has improved the society for the membership. I'm proud to be their leader and I'm proud to be your chief executive. Thank you.